This is. You want to get my name is Steven Sony. Um, part of WAB, all about business. I'm um, here with Ryan Mack and the rest of the team. Well, what we do, uh, we go around, we preach um, financial awareness to a lot of people. We do a lot of community outreach programs. With the title that I came up with for the seminar, it's called You're Young, You're Smart, You're Good, Even Good Looking. So why not pitch so individual retirement account, which is much better than a regular saving account because you can actually put actually up to four thousand dollars a year into it, and that money keeps going much faster than this regular saving account. So you could establish that kind of account when you just turn eighteen. The best thing about it is just that it's um, tax deferred, which means you don't have, you can't they're not gonna tax your money until you retire, join it when you retire. And the best thing is like you know. It's establishing, especially with social security going down the drain. Even the Bush administration said that you know we should, um, you know, set up our own retirement account. The um, interest rate just went up on, on loans. Therefore, people gotta pay more, more money on, on their education. You, you can never reach that level of, of, of you know of you know income if you're not doing the right things. As we all know, the market fluctuates. It has its high points and its low points. Now, what stock traders do is they're dumping the money in the market at a particular time. They do it by monthly. So suppose you set your budget and you have, let's say, two hundred dollars left over. You put the two hundred dollars in, um, in the market every month, as opposed to dumping it in at one time. So that way, coefficients of, um, coefficients are balanced out. When the market is high, you buy less stocks. When the market is low, you buy more stocks. Now you need to have three to six months living expenses covered. Three months in a high yield savings account and three months in a credit card. Now the best accounts are from Immigrants Direct, ING Direct, and HSBC. Immigrant savings is the best one because it has a 5.15 interest rate. Estate planning, um, insurance, and budget. Business. This, uh, statistics also show that um, people spend more money than they earn. That's why we need to start budgeting today. Top mistakes. Getting into credit card debt. Squandering the student loan money. Not budgeting. Ruining your FICO score. <laughs> Yeah. And getting the college that's too expensive. Stay away from it. Eliminating all, all high risk debt. And by high risk debt, I mean credit cards or um, cash advances. Um, the reason credit cards are high risk debt because um, the interest rates on credit cards, they fluctuate. So you really have no control over whether it goes up or down, which they're most likely going to go up. And so, um, and cash advances, they have the, one of the highest interest rates out. Like you might be paying twenty percent on the on the cash advance, so my advice is don't get involved with credit cards and cash advance. Determines what type of loan, okay, what type of interest rate you get on a house or a car. So the better the average score, the less interest you get on a mortgage. So if you um the way you build up your fight the way you can turn out your fight score is either not on your credit cards, take out credit cards, you don't pay the bills, or you don't pay it back on time. That all that contributes to to lowering your FICO score. So after college, you might you might be getting money, you want, but you, when you try to get a house now, you, you you have enough you have money, but you don't have enough money to pay off the interest on the on your on your mortgage. So what you want to do is stay away from stay, once again stay away from credit cards. Don't try don't lower your FICO score. Oh, uh, only two times to um, use a credit card is for emergencies and for, um, for building a FICO score, which helps you um, determine which interest rate, what kind of interest rate you get on a mortgage or on a car, stuff like that. The better your FICO score is, the less interest you'll get on um, things like that. It's all about being smart with your money, because 85% of, of African Americans are financially illiterate, so, which means they don't, really, they don't know these principles that we're teaching. So um, what we try to do, what we've been doing this summer, is going out to various community outreach programs, students like yourself, even adults, teaching them these principles so that they can know and better themselves. So um, I think it's great that you guys are here being so young because there's a lot of, believe it or not, there's a lot of adults that don't know the things that you guys are learning right, right now, today, this week, whatever you may be learning. And um, it's just important to to be smart with your money because you're always, money makes the world go round. There's only about so much people I know about financial literacy. There's only about so much people that understand how finance works. That's why they say 93% of Americans are financially literate because of the fact that 
that this is that, is that money, that many people that don't understand my finance. And when I say no, it's that, I mean student loans, for example, example of student loans. Student loans is considered low as debt because of the ability you know, has a lower interest rate than a credit as opposed to a credit card which has a higher interest rate. And uh, also another example of uh, so low risk debt is a house like a mortgage. That's also an example of uh, low risk debt. But um, it's at the same time these are secured debt. Student loans are secured debt, mortgage is secured debt. When I say secured debt, I mean that they can come if you don't pay them back, they can come after everything you own. In order to keep scholarships that have like a three point no average. Three point no translation is about an eighty average. You know what I mean? An eighty average is really not that hard to get once you apply yourself, once you put your mind to it. You know, because they said, um, I can do all things through Christ who strength this baby. So regardless, once you apply yourself, you will get that. Now student loans, the thing about them is that student loans might not have a very high interest rate, like they was considered low risk debt, but at the same time they're considered a secure debt. Secure debt means that if you take, if you have this kind of debt, if, if I give you a student loan and you don't pay it back and I say you pay it back and you miss the payments, I'm coming after everything you have, all your assets, your car, your home, I'm gonna start garnishing your checks, I'm gonna find a way to get my money back. Because you only have money. And, and that's secure debt. Now there are several different types of company retirement plans, one of which is a 401k. Now with the 401k, it is tax deductible. Therefore, if you put in $500 into your 401k every pay period, then you take that $500 away from your paycheck, and then your check is taxed. It's not taxed, that $500 isn't taxed. But you can only put $15,000 into your 401k a year. Now, with enrolling in your company's retirement plan, you want to make sure you have the appropriate asset allocation. Now, with asset, asset allocation is basically the mixture of investments in your portfolio. Um, an example of an asset allocation would be for a younger person. A younger person would have uh, maybe 70% stocks and 30% bonds, seeing as how stocks are more volatile. Say that was me, for example, then I would have that 70% stocks and 30% bonds, so I have more time to gain my money back because the market, it fluctuates, it has its high points and its low points, so if I lose money, I have a lot more time to gain, as opposed to an older person who more than likely have 30% stocks and 70% bonds because that's a guaranteed return, so they're not going to be as risky. Two factors that will determine your asset allocation structure is market conditions, which is how you feel the market is going to do in the next couple of years, where you think the market is going to be if it's going to help your investments. And uh, another thing is your risk tolerance. How, how much risk you're willing to take with your investments. What does financial planning mean to you? Who builds a tower without first counting the cost to figure out how much it's going to cost to complete it? Right? You need to figure out how much it's going to cost to build your tower of financial future. How much are you making? How much are you earning to be able to put in your tower of financial future? This thing must be figured out immediately, step one, getting a grip on your money, adequate insurance coverage, up-to-date estate planning documents, a working budget. You got step two, eliminate all high-risk debt. Step three, make sure your, your company retirement plan. Step four, emergency fund, three to six months living expenses. You got step five, IRA, establish an IRA. Step six, eliminate low-risk debt. Step seven, dollar cost investment strategy in the market. You don't want to let the, the amount of revenue the insurance agent is making dictate how much you need. That's right, that's right. You say, how much insurance do I need to replace my income so my child can live and can be fruitful yeah. after I'm born if something happens to me? Uh, insurance is never meant to be a replacement for financial planning. 60% of America is spending more money than they earn every single month. Okay? How are we supposed to get ahead? if we're spending more money than we make. If we make $2,000 a month or $4,000 a month and we're spending $4,500 a month, what does that mean? You need to have certain things in place to make sure that your family is provided for.